welcome to Patrick's Models and Transport. So, this evening we're going to have a quick chat about dirty wheels. Dirt that rolling stock and locomotives uh, pick up from the rails. Of course, the rails in a layout have to be cleaned regularly, not long before lifting the, the, the board for the layout. I cleaned all the track. Uh, and it was full of gunk and dirt. Of course, the dirt that deposits on the rails also uh, is picked up by the wheels, and uh, and then you, you end up getting uh, locomotives that don't work properly and things like this. So, <clears throat> so we're gonna have a quick look at how the dirt deposits on the different wheels of our rolling stock. So, in my experience, dirt doesn't tend to deposit or deposits less on conductive wheels which are also driving wheels. This is a locomotive, this is an 080, so these are all driving wheels, all four of them on the Pico BR class 55 uh, Prussian Railways uh, and then Belgian Railways. So we see that one, two, three and even the last axle, four, which has got the traction tires, but it's also conductive because we've got pickups on all four axles. And uh, so it also picks up electricity from the flanges. So you can see that. Uh, I don't know what you lot can see, but uh, you folk, yes, you can easily see that there are pickups on all the axles, like the pickups behind the wheels. You can easily, you can easily notice them. You can see the copper, the copper, Copper pickups, it's a strip right there behind the axles. So, in this case, these wheels are relatively clean because they are not only they don't not only pick up electricity, they are also driving wheels, and driving wheels tend to not get so dirty. So, we can actually do a test. Let's get the lighter fluid and uh, have a quick look at this. I have to go and buy some. We're getting low on lighter fluid. Let's just pop it into this lid. It's plastic, so and cardboard. Okay, let's put the lighter fluid in there. Okay, shut that so that we don't scale it all over the floor. Uh, okay, let's have a quick look. I'm going to put on another second pair of glasses so I see what I'm doing. Let's see if this boy's recording. Yes, it is. Very well. So, there is some dirt. I can see some dirt on these wheels. I use lighter fluid to clean my locomotive wheels. You can see that there is dirt. I'm putting this away, so I want to put it away clean. So, there we go. In particular, here. The dirt is deposited on the rails so first of all we have dust my wife will tell you that this is a very dusty room <laughs> we've been tidying so it's not so dusty then uh, we also have to consider static electricity on the live rails with said dust then we have to consider the fact that the dirt is then spread around by, in particular, by plastic wheels. And some of my rolling stock has got plastic wheels. I like to replace plastic wheels uh, if I see that they really don't work properly. But if the plastic wheels work and do the job, in particular, if they're those UF wheels that have got plastic, the plastic wheels but metal axles. Metal axles are very good. They they run well. But even some plastic wheels on, for example, Kleinbahn are okay. I'd even on Gimas. So I'm not really biased against plastic wheels. I'm cleaning the traction tires as well because they really gather up a lot of filth. And uh, so you can see that there's plenty of mank on there. Huh? It's pretty filthy. Let's dip it in here a bit more. Lighter fluid is very good because it doesn't, if you get any on the plastic, it doesn't damage the plastic. Uh, there are even other products, Isopro IPA people use as well, isopropylic acid, uh, uh, alcohol, not acid, I'm talking rubbish. Um, 
I used to, at the beginning, I used to use uh, nail varnish remover. But nail varnish remover, I generally use that to, if I just have to get some track a quick clean. But I prefer to use lighter fluidium for the track. I generally use lighter fluidium for the track. It's cheap. You can get, I use Zippo. Tobacconist near my house has Zippo, so I use Zippo. And there we go. I think there's some dirt here. Look at that. This wheel is dirty. Maybe we should change a cotton bud. Let's change a cotton bud. Let's use the other side, it's not so dirty. And lighter fluid does a very, very good job of both wheels and track. And it's very important to clean not just locomotives, because of course if the wheels are not clean, but also to clean the wheel of the rolling stock. Uh, in particular the plastic wheels, it's very important to keep them clean because they really carry the dirt, because the dirt sticks to the plastic in an incredible manner. You can see that the, there we go, there's a bit of dirt there. So it's always good to put locomotives away. So we will be, because also another thing, I had the layout out and in practical, practically constant use since the end of August. <laughs> so it was really out for a long time. The rails managed to get really dirty, plus the dust, plus running trains. So I've got quite a lot of cleaning to do. So we will be seeing some cleaning, mainly, I know what stock I used, I'll gradually clean the stock, I won't do it all in video because otherwise it'll be, it'll be Patrick's, uh, Patrick's cleaning channel, not uh, real, not models and transport. And uh, anyway, the, it'll be a bit boring just watching a bloke cleaning wheels. But we'll go through the, the locomotives, the main locomotives that have been in use. Uh, some I have already cleaned because... I need, really needed to, there's some dirt on there. Generally, peacock wheels uh, tend to remain quite clean. This is a good thing of peacock, the kind of steel we've used. Uh, they don't tend to pick up a lot of dirt. They are very, very... You can also see this locomotive here. I've had this locomotive since July. And uh, the... I did all the lubrication. You can see here on the gears, on the gears here, you can still see that the technical petroleum jelly that I applied to the gears is still there. They're still nice and wet, so they're nicely lubricated. So that's that's proof that technical petroleum jelly is a very very good product. And I think I've finished all my lighter fluid here, the one that was in the jar in the in the, in the cap of this wee jar. So I think that's quite nice. So these are traction. Not only do these wheels pick electricity up, they're also traction wheels, and traction wheels tend to stay cleaner than non-traction pickup wheels. There aren't any on here, but we'll see some on another locomotive on the BR64. The BR64 has got it picks up from all drive the, the three driving axles and also from the front and rear pony trucks. So a very, very good locomotive in that sense. And we'll see in that case some okay. A little bit of this is slightly oxidized. You see there's some dirt on here. Well, it's very important to keep these clean. And when you're finished with a locomotive, put it away clean. That way the next time you'll take it out to work. It will be clean and working properly, so that's okay. I just spot the battery. I've even very, very dirty locomotives or things with very oxidized wheels. I've never used wire brushes. I see that there are other uh, modelers who use wire brushes. Brass, the brass brush. The brass brush is okay because it's soft and it doesn't damage. Uh, I don't know. I'm, the, yes, it'll definitely be much, much faster if you have to clean something quickly. But, I don't know, mm, using a brass brush, apart from the noise that the electric tool makes, and I generally do this, this is my quiet hobby that I like doing, either if I'm on my own listening to music, or, uh, 
whether from doing a doing a video or talking to you uh, enthusiasts and youtubers so to say here making a racket with a rotary tool and i don't really think my neighbors through the wall or the down or the old lady who lives down the stairs would particularly appreciate me using uh, considering i do these things in the evening using a rotary tool <laughs> at 10 past 10 in the evening <laughs> it might be i might be a little bit unpopular so uh, i'm just gonna keep things as they are so okay that's clean enough let's see visual inspection okay are there any more duct here i think that's good okay we're good to go right -o. let's go the other way everything's fine okay all systems go nine volt battery did the job so that is a locomotive so the wheels were relatively clean because these are pickup and traction let's have a look at some not only non-pickup but non-traction the tender the tender wheels are absolutely filthy they are disgusting they're full of gunk and when i got this in july i cleaned the wheels and so this this dirt is, and it was clean when i began you when i began running the trains again in at the end of august so this is all dirt that has accumulated in, let's say, we're at the end of November, end of August, so September, October, November. Three months of running, and this is the dirt that's been picked up. It's quite a lot, and this dirt here is spreading along the track. So these dirty wheels are spreading the dirt everywhere, and you start having dirt on the on near points in particular dirt tends to accumulate in po near points near fish plates because there's a, a decrease in in, uh, in electrical conductivity and voltage so it's uh, very important to keep the non-conductive wheels clean and you can see here i hope you can see what i'm doing it's coming nice and clean i'll try and show you better filth that's coming off here and just a spot of lighter fluid does the job very very well so that was clean and that's only on one wheel it's absolutely filthy i think we'll put another spot of fluid here let's just get some more out here uh, dirt here dirt dirt from the from the track let's just take that here oh come on what are you doing it's gunk, filth. Stick it on here. It's got itself stuck onto the. Of course, I don't have very many cotton buds here. I should get up and go to the bathroom and get some more. Okay, let's do this one. Let's do all one side. It's an absolute disaster here. Filth is incredible. I think we have enough cotton buds to finish this, and uh, then it will be. That's it. Absolutely black. Black. Let's get another cotton bud. that's nice and clean let's do this one this one is okay let's just give it another another v shot you can continue cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning you'll always get dirt coming off you know okay uh, peacock wheels are really very nice to clean very very uh, it's not it's just the dirt of three months it's not the dirt of <laughs> running for years and years and years and then maybe caked on uh, sitting around in a lot for another 30 years unused you know it's so it's, it comes away pretty quickly we'll begin with this wheel this wheel's not so dirty In this case, we see that the first, the, fr the first axle and central axle are dirtier. 
This is a locomotive that usually runs forward, so it's picking up the dirt and it's dirtying the foremost wheels first. So the rear more the rearmost wheels are cleaner. Let's go and get the central axle here. Same nine. This is absolutely filthy. This is something. Oof, look at that. Look at that. That's disgusting. And we'll give this a good clean. We'll leave that for a bit. It's always better to change them frequently because otherwise they, you just end up spreading the dirt from one point to another and you're not cleaning anything. Okay, that's clean. And uh, let's have a look at the last one. Maybe we can put another wee bit of petrol in here. Like the fluid. Okay, let's do this one. This is nice and easy because it's a, a nice easy tender to clean the wheels on because it's just a three axle tender, no bogies and move around and fiddle around and so it's really easy. Plus the, and, and even there the dirt tends to gather between the tire and the flange. It is really, really dirty. That's practically one, one, one wheel, one wheel, completely, completely filthy. No doubt somebody will count the times I say filthy. Uh, I can use some synonyms like some Scottish ones like manky, minging, mock it. They all mean filthy. And if we want to go into Italian, onto means filthy. Sporco. Sporco is the... Sporco means dirt. Eh? And sporco is also the adjective. Eh? But if you want to say something stronger, you say onto. Onto, onto I think, is more northern Italian. Here in Veneto, where I live, where I'm from. Uh, then there's another, which is standard Italian, is tozzo. Tozzo and tozzeria. But I use a lot of words in Italian which are from the north, because I live in the north, I grew up in the north, and I use lots of local words, uh, not local words, but the variety, local variety of Italian that are, maybe, are not used in central and southern Italy. Uh, Italy is a very long country, and the northern, in the north of Italy, the Italian spoken in the north of Italy, is based on the dialects of northern Italy, which dialects uh, were heavily influenced by Germanic languages. And practically, the, the ling linguistic border between northern Italian dialects uh, and central southern Italian dialects uh, is uh, towards just after Rimini Riccione on the Rubicon. And it divides linguistically, it divides northern Italy from central Italy. And, uh, for instance, we always use, uh, when we talk about the past, we use uh, a construction which is called Passato Prossimo, so near past, but we use it all the time. We rarely use remote past, Passato Remoto, because in the dialects spoken in the north, it doesn't exist. <laughs> but, uh, I hope I'm not boring you with these languages. I, I work as a translator and interpreter, and I teach English uh, privately and courses. I never taught at school. But, uh, I've always, I've always worked in the real world, not at school. Um, I've, and I'm interested in all matters, in all language matters. So, in Italy, you'll notice when you come to Italy that there are many different accents and many different dialects. And the northern Italian dialects, northern Italian dialects, more or less, we even talking, speaking dialect. There's the ones of the northeast, uh, which are very similar, so Veneto, Friuli, Friulano is a completely different language. Huh? Friulano, Udine is a completely different language. But we can understand that people speaking Triestino from Trieste, Train, Trentino, the Italian part of Trentino, Alto Adige, not South Tyrol, they have to speak German. They speak a German, uh, a Tyrolean dialect, uh, not real, not proper German. And we have the. But we can, even with the dialect spoken in Lombardy, we can understand dialect, I can understand it, uh, 
in Turin it's more influenced by French but more or less there are some common common elements because the, the Germanic populations that were here were the Goths the Longobards and they left a very heavy imprinting on their language mixed with Latin and produced modern day Italian and in specifically modern day northern Italian so I, I tend to use I use plenty of typical northern Italian words that sometimes people from the center and south have no idea what I'm talking about of course in my everyday life but if I'm talking formally you don't use them okay so that's clean and uh, these uh, this locomotive, this tender is very well made because you can see that there are the axle, but the axles, the metal axles, are set into metal axle boxes. So what I do always put a spot of uh, sewing machine oil here every now and again to stop them getting stiff, and uh, that's that, and it keeps everything running nice and smooth. So we finished with that. That was a cleaning, just to show you how much disgusting dirt gathers. And uh, I'm not going to switch on to doing a second locomotive now. I'll do the, the, another, lo another video with a BR-64. will be the next video. So, I hope you found that interesting. And uh, I hope I didn't bore you too much with my chatting along about Northern Italian dialects and the language and things. But I think it's something useful and interesting. And uh, if you have any, any, any comment, your comments, uh, if you want to correct something, if I even said something incorrect about languages, and uh, if you want to, to comment even about that topic, feel free to do so in the comments. And uh, if you enjoy the video, you do a like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, uh, click the notification bell, that way will be able to see more such exciting videos of uh, the man with the cotton buds and the, pe and, the, and the lighter fluid and the toothpicks. Okay, right. Cheerio and see you next time. Ciao, ciao.